It's untimely to develop the enlightenment factor of investigation of Dhamma, the enlightenment factor of energy, and the enlightenment factor of delight. For what reason? Because the mind is excited, monks, and it is difficult to calm it down with those things. Suppose, monks, a man wants to extinguish a great bonfire. If he, draws, if he throws dry grass, dry cow dung, and dry timber into it, blows on it, and does not scatter soil over it, would he be able to extinguish the great bonfire? No, Venerable Sir. So too, monks, on an occasion when the mind becomes excited, it is untimely to develop the enlightenment factor of discrimination, of investigation of Dhamma, the enlightenment factor of energy, and the enlightenment factor of delight. For what reason? Because the mind is excited, monks, and it is difficult to calm it down with those things. On an occasion, monks, when the mind becomes excited, it is timely to develop the enlightenment factor of tranquility, the enlightenment factor of concentration, and the enlightenment factor of equanimity. For what reason? Because the mind is excited, monks, and it is easy to calm it down with those things. Suppose, monks, a man wants to extinguish a great bonfire. If he throws wet grass, wet cow dung, and wet timber into it, sprays it with water, and scatters soil over it, would he be able to extinguish that great bonfire? Yes, Venerable Sir. So too, monks, on an occasion when the mind becomes excited, it is timely to develop the enlightenment factor of tranquility, the enlightenment factor of concentration, and the enlightenment factor of equanimity. For what reason? Because the mind is excited, monks, and it is easy to calm it down with those things. But recollection, monks, I say, is always useful. So recollection is recollection of the Dhamma mainly in, uh, in as far as the seven Bojangas are concerned. Mm. So when the mind is excited, uh, it is uh, a good time to calm it down by sitting down to meditate. The mind is excited, I mean, our cheese is, is, is moving, so maybe when you sit down, it's, uh, it calms down. The next sutta is 46.54. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling among the Kolians, where there was a town of the Kolians named Halida Vasana. Then in the morning, a number of monks dressed and taking their bows and robes, entered Halida Vasana for alms. Then it occurred to them, it is, too, it is still too early to walk for alms in Halida Vasana. Let us go to the park of the wondrous of other sects. Then those monks went to the park of the wondrous of other sects. They exchanged greetings with those wondrous, and when they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk, sat down to one side. The wondrous then said to them, Friends, the ascetic Gautama teaches the Dhamma to his disciples thus, Come, monks, abandon the five hindrances, the corruptions of the mind that weaken wisdom, and dwell pervading one quarter with the mind imbued with loving kindness. Likewise, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter, thus above, below, across, and everywhere, and to all as to oneself, dwell pervading the entire world with the mind imbued with loving kindness, vast, exalted, measureless, without hostility, without ill will, dwell pervading one quarter with the mind imbued with compassion, likewise the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter, thus above, below, across, and everywhere, and to all as to oneself, dwell pervading the entire world with a mind imbued with compassion, vast, exalted, measureless, without hostility, without ill will. Dwell pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with joy, likewise the second quarter, the third quarter, the fourth quarter, thus above, below, across, and everywhere, and to all as to oneself, dwell pervading the entire world with a mind imbued with joy, vast, exalted, measureless, without hostility, without ill will. Dwell pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with equanimity. Likewise, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter, thus above, below, across, and everywhere, and to all as to oneself. Dwell pervading the entire world with a mind imbued with equanimity, 
vast, exalted, measureless, without hostility, without ill will. We two friends teach the Dhamma to our disciples thus. Come friends, abandon the five hindrances, etc. And he quoted exactly as above. So friends, what here is the distinction, the disparity, the difference between the ascetic Gautama and us, that is regarding the one Dhamma teaching and the other, regarding the one manner of instruction and the other. Then those monks neither delighted in nor rejected the statement of those wanderers. Without delighting in it, without rejecting it, they rose from the seats and left, thinking, we shall learn the meaning of the statement in the presence of the Blessed One. Then when those monks had walked for alms in Halida of Asana and had returned from the alms round, after their meal they approached the Blessed One. Having paid homage to him, they sat down to one side and reported to him the entire discussion between those wanderers and themselves. So actually just now they said uh, the Buddha taught uh, that we should uh, pervade uh, the entire world uh, with these four things, uh, metta, loving kindness, then uh, karuna, compassion, and then mudita, uh, joy, and then upeka, equanimity. Uh, uh. So they say uh, we also practice the same thing, uh, so what's the difference? Then the Buddha said, Monks, when wanderers of other sects speak thus, they should be asked, Friends, how is the liberation by mind of loving kindness developed? What does it have as its destination, its culmination, its fruit, its final goal? How is the liberation by mind of compassion developed? What does it have as its destination, its culmination, its fruit, its final goal? How is the liberation by mind of joy developed? What does it have as its destination, its culmination, its fruit, its final goal? How is the liberation by mind of equanimity developed? What does it have as its destination, its culmination, its fruit, its final goal? Being asked thus, those wanderers would not be able to reply, and further, they would meet with vexation. <coughs> For what reason? because that would not be within their domain. I do not see anyone monks in this world with its devas, Mara and Brahma, in this generation with its ascetics and Brahmins, its devas and humans, who could satisfy the mind with an answer to these questions, except the Tathagata, or a disciple of the Tathagata, or one who has heard it from them. And how, monks, is the liberation by mind of loving-kindness developed? What does it have as its destination, its culmination, its fruit, its final goal? Here, monks, a monk develops the enlightenment factor of recollection accompanied by loving-kindness. The enlightenment uh, factor of uh, investigation of Dhamma, uh, the factor of uh, energy, etc. Uh, accompanied by lo loving-kindness, based upon seclusion, dispassion and cessation, maturing in release. If he wishes, may I dwell perceiving the repulsive in the unrepulsive. He dwells perceiving re the repulsive therein. If he wishes, may I dwell perceiving the unrepulsive in the repulsive. He dwells perceiving the unrepulsive therein. If he wishes, may I dwell perceiving the repulsive in the unrepulsive and in the repulsive. He dwells perceiving the repulsive therein. If he wishes, may I dwell perceiving the unrepulsive in the repulsive and, the, and in the unrepulsive. He dwells perceiving the unrepulsive therein. If he wishes, avoiding both the unrepulsive and the, and the repulsive, may I dwell equanim equanimously mindful and clearly comprehending. Maybe this one is collected and mindful. Then he dwells therein, equanimously, collected and mindful. Or else he enters and dwells in the deliverance of the beautiful. Monks, the liberation by mind of loving kindness has the beautiful as its culmination, I say. For a wise monk here who has not penetrated to a superior liberation. Let's stop here for a moment. So here, the Buddha is saying that if a monk develops the enlightenment factors, uh, uh, 
uh, all the seven al- uh, alignment factors, uh, and they are uh, accompanied by loving kindness. Uh, then uh, uh, the mind becomes uh, strong uh, because if he has developed the uh, seven enlightenment factors, uh, he would have uh, attained the uh, fourth jhana. And then further, uh, if he practices this uh, uh, loving kindness uh, meditation, uh, then uh, the mind becomes strong uh, so that if he wants to perceive uh, the repulsive or the unrepulsive, uh, the mind is so strong uh, that um, he can. Normally, our mind uh, is uh, conditioned condition. So when we see something, we feel it is attractive or rep- or repulsive. But we can actually, this perception can be changed. For example, if we see the body of the opposite, the body of someone of the opposite sex, it may appear attractive. But if we train our mind on the 32 parts of the body to see the body in terms of all the 32 things, then uh, if, we, if the mind is strong enough, uh, then it can feel uh, that the body, uh, instead of being attractive, uh, it is repulsive. Uh, uh. So here, uh, this person has trained the mind uh, so that he can perceive uh, uh, repulsive or unrepulsive as he wishes. Uh. And then also, uh, uh, the culmination uh, of this uh, liberation by mind of loving-kindness uh, meditation uh, as the beautiful, as the as uh, as its uh, end result, uh, this uh, beautiful uh, is uh, the third of the eight deliverances. Uh, the eight deliverances are this atavimoka. Uh, so uh, this uh, he perceives beautiful, uh, everything uh, beautiful. Uh, so this is the if this if this monk uh, has not attained. Uh, enlightenment, then uh, this is the culmination of his uh, meditation uh, of liberation by mind of loving kindness. Uh, the, the topmost uh, he can achieve uh, is to perceive beautiful. And how monks is the liberation by mind of compassion developed? What does it have as its destination, its culmination, its fruit, its final goal? Here, monks, a monk develops the enlightenment factor of recollection accompanied by compassion. Uh, he develops the enlightenment factor of uh, investigation of Dhamma accompanied by compassion. He develops the enlightenment factor of energy accompanied by compassion, etc. If he wishes me, I dwell perceiving the repulsive in the unrepulsive. He dwells perceiving the repulsive therein. If he uh, if he wishes uh, uh, to perceive the unrepulsive, uh, uh, then uh, he, he does so. Uh, uh, if he wishes avoiding both the unrepulsive and the repulsive, may I dwell equanimously, mindful and clear, and mindful and collected. Uh, then he dwells therein, equanimously, mindful and collected. Or else, with the complete transcendence of perceptions of forms, with the passing away of perceptions of sensory impingement, with non-attention to perceptions of diversity, aware that space is infinite, he enters and dwells in the base of the infinity of space. Monks, the liberation by mind of compassion has the base of the infinity of space at its culmination, I say. For a wise monk here who has not penetrated to a superior liberation. I'll stop here for a moment. So here, uh, a monk practicing uh, liberation by mind or compassion, uh, the topmost point uh, is to attain this uh, arupa jhana called the base of the infinity of space. Uh, if this monk has not attained liberation, uh, he will attain this uh, arupa jhana, base of infinity of space. And here uh, is one of those suttas uh, which contradicts the later books uh, like the Visuddhi Maga. In the Visuddhi Maga, uh, it stated uh, that this uh, uh, practice of uh, uh, meditation on uh, Metta, Karuna, Mudita, and Upeka can only go up to the Rupa Jhanas. Uh. 
This is mentioned in the back of the book, uh, in the note number 111. In note, look at the note.